Hey friends, thanks for clicking on this video and stopping into my channel, Heidi Sambal DIY. In today's episode, I'm sharing Dollar Tree projects that are easy to follow along, that have a high and finished look, and that are so much fun to make. All right, now let's get crafting. Start by grabbing one of these tiles from the Dollar Tree and paint it white or whatever color you want. Let's upcycle a food can. This had refried beans from a night when I made burritos for my family. And I'm also gonna be using these white sunflowers as well as a pretty little yellow ditzy flower. Go ahead and measure the height of your can and cut your tile down to the height that you're gonna to need to wrap around the can. We're going to conceal that can texture with this beautiful tile and it's going to make it look so high end when we're done and you would never know that it was a food can. These could be so pretty in all different sizes, especially if you make different ones and put them and cluster them on a table together. Now this can is a little bit wider, so I had to get an extra little piece to glue to make the band come all the way around. Do remember that when you're working with hot glue on metal, the metal will heat up. So just be cautious as you're gluing on this tile. And once you've got that glued into place, you're gonna go ahead and move on to our next step, which is bringing forth that texture. I know this is super popular with these tiles, but honestly, I love this process. I don't know if you're all sick of this yet, but I thought these tiles would be so beautiful on these cans and really elevate the look. So once you've dry brushed on that paint, now we're going to start working on the inside of the can. I added some foam. I'm tying on a ribbon and just tying a knot and creating a dovetail on the end, zhuzhing it up a little bit. And now we're going to start working on the inside of that can. I'm going to cut down the florals that I've picked. I thought a really pretty buttery yellow with a beautiful white sunflower would be such a pretty combo for the fall. I'm going to add in some of the Spanish moss, glue that into place, and then I'm going to go and start adding in all of my florals. I'm starting with the smaller floral first so I can fill up the bottom of that florals can, and then now I'm going to come in with the sunflowers. Now here's a tip with these sunflowers. When they come on the stem, their flowers are always facing straight up, that's not the natural position of a sunflower. They chase the sun all day long, so their necks are actually bent to the side, just like this. So I always like to bend them after I've cut them loose from the little bushel stem of the pick. And you can see this is the difference. Just making that twist to the side really elevates these and makes them look more natural. So I'm gonna go ahead and just stick all of those down into place. And now for a little added farmhouse detail, I thought it would be so cute to take these little thread spindles and just glue them to the bottom like little feet. I get these from Hobby Lobby in a pack. I always get them when they're on sale. And just gluing that to the bottom really elevates the look of this and the finished result is such a high-end store finish design. I hope you'll give this one a try. For this DIY, we're going to be using red different pattern fabrics, two solid green fabrics, this printable of an apple and a leaf, and then a stick from my yard. Start by cutting out your printable, and once you've got that all cut out, I'm going to go ahead and take all of these different stacks of fabrics, and I'm just going to cut them all out at the same time because I want to have a little bit of a rough edge to these because we're going for a farmhouse country feel for this project. So I'm going to go ahead and just cut around my apple. You could definitely pin your fabric to the pattern, but I'm just kind of, like I said, freehanding it. Then I'm also going to do the same thing with my leaves. I'm going to cut out a whole bunch of them. And to put your apples together, you're going to need two sides. So you can see here that I doubled up each piece of pattern or solid color fabric. And I'm going to slowly go around with my hot glue, just gluing all the edges and leaving an opening 
so that I can stuff the apples itself. Once I've gotten it to the thickness that I want and stuffed inside my apple, I'm going to go ahead and take a piece of twine that's long enough that we're going to be adding to the stick in just a few moments. And you're just going to put that little twine right down in there, hot glue it in, and then make sure your opening is flat enough to be able to add a little bit more glue and then just pinch that down into place. If it starts to buckle and feel too chunky, it might be that you just have too much batting in there. You might have to take some out. Then for my leaves, you can see here that I'm gluing two of them together to make them thicker. And then I'm gonna add that right to where the twine and the apple meet up. So it looks like a little leaf on our apple. And then I'm going to take some twine and I'm going to tie a simple little bow Make sure I get the length of the tails that I want on my bow and then once I do I can just go ahead and glue that right in place where the apple and the leaf meet up and it just looks so darling. I love the little bow touch with the twine. Once I've got my bows and all of my apples constructed, I'm going to go ahead and take all of those long twines that we were putting into the apple and we're going to just figure out the different lengths that we want. And then I'm going to just take some hot glue and wrap my twine around the branch that I got out of my yard. And then I'm going to have all of these different apples at different lengths. Now at this point, all the apples have been glued to the stick. And we're going to go ahead and take some long pieces of raffia to create a nice, big, beautiful bow. I went ahead and glued that to my stick. And then I'm going to go ahead and just give some of the ends a trim so that they're not too long going into the apple. At this point, it's ready to be hung up with this last little bit of twine added. Just do a couple double knots and a loop so you can add it to your front door or in front of a mirror or wherever you would like to decorate with it for the fall. I saw this large sign and they were next to each other on the wall of all the new Dollar Tree signs and I thought I'm going to put three of them together and make this just look so high end. I'm now going to remove the raffia bow and the leaves gently off of the sign because we are going to be painting these two white autumn signs. Once you've got everything off. You're going to go ahead and come in with whatever color orange you would like. I'm going to be going with a really beautiful creamy orange. I'm going to just paint over that and you can see that it's opaque. The bottom artwork is still shining through. It's going to take about three to four coats depending on what type of paint you're using. Once it's all painted, I'm now going to come in and do a little bit of distressing with a dry brown paintbrush and I'm just lightly bringing up that texture like you would see on a pumpkin. Once they are dry, I'm now going to line them up on my cutting mat where it's got all these grids. It's going to help me put them together really straight. I'm going to add on some glue on the edge on the inner side of these two pumpkins sitting here and then I'm going to put on this happy fall. It's amazing how the sign was cute as is but when you bring three of them together it really does bulk up the value and the look of these and I'm only spending you know a dollar twenty five for each of these signs and I'm reusing the leaves and I'm adding on just a couple of little things so all in for this project it's gonna cost me about four dollars maybe four dollars and fifty cents at the most I, I, I wouldn't even say four fifty maybe four twenty five for all of this high-end look to come together and that's the thing I love about Dollar Tree DIYs. When you bring a couple of pieces together, you really can just elevate the look of just one simple sign. And it's just fun to be creative and customize things and bring things together and just dream up crafty things. I know I'm not the only one that feels this way. It's just such a fun hobby to be able to make home decor that looks so high end for a fraction of the cost because this particular sign with how big this is Hobby Lobby sells signs that are like this that are easily easily 30 35 dollars 
So now I've added some twine and some fabric around the stems of my pumpkins. I'm bringing back in the green leaf into the middle. That was from one of the other autumn white signs. Added a bow, added a button, and now on the back we're going to have a nice substantial rope back there to help hold up the weight because it is heavy with these three signs and how large it is. And we're going to add on some glue. I like to fray the ends of my rope, add the glue, and then glue some more, and then take a popsicle stick that I cut down to size and glue that right on top to complete that look. For this DIY, we're going to be using this really darling scarecrow sign. You could leave it as is, but I wanted to make something a little bit different with it. So I'm going to pop off the welcome part, and then I'm going to snip the string on the back, flip it over, and pop out the staples that are with that twine that is on there. Once you've got that all removed, I'm going to make a line where I want to score my board so that I can cut it in half because we're going to make two large tag signs. These are so cute to put on a shelf or by your front door where you're decorating your fall area. Everyone's got some place in their home that they love to put some decor pieces out. And the greatest thing about this sign is you can make two of these tags and you'll see at the end how they look all together but they look so cute if you stack some pumpkins in front of it. Now once I got my angles cut off on those top corners as you saw me do I'm gonna go ahead and cut some scrapbook paper down now this one sign is a little bit longer than a 12 inch piece of paper so I added on a little bit more paper at the bottom I thought it would be really cute to mix up some of the paper so I've got that green polka dot with the really pretty berry red stripe and then I also have this wood grain paper and now this all came in a paper packet I'm gonna link that paper down below if you're interested I pick it up at Joann's and I got it on sale and I love these kind of paper pads because you can do so many cool things and you can keep that color scheme going throughout your DIYs as you're working on your projects throughout the season so now I'm gonna add on some twine and I'm gonna add on some of these leaves I thought this would be really cute to add this on and then I'm gonna pull out my trusty crocodile friends you know I love this I know so many of you have been picking these up let me know in the comments down below how you have been enjoying your crocodile if you bought one recently I'm gonna link it down below in the description box it is the best tool to punch through wood metal plastic this thing can go through everything and it never hurts my hand it's got this really great spring system on it once I punched my hole in the top of my sign I went ahead and wrapped in some of this rope again that I love and I'm just gonna twist the and again you're gonna see here where I twist it and then fray the edges and then you can put it up to display Now we're going to make a super easy wreath that is so stunning and high impact in your home. I picked this one up from Joann's and ended up getting it 50% off because it's larger than the ones that they sell at the Dollar Tree. I'm also going to take a book that I got from the Dollar Tree. I dunked it in water and put it outside and let it air dry so that it looked nice and weathered. Now what we're going to do is we're going to rip off a bunch of pages and we're going to just simply cut that in half so that they're shorter. You don't want them to be too long because otherwise this will be a massive, massive wreath. Go ahead and separate all those pages. And now we're gonna come in and we're gonna start to ruffle those papers. This is such a cool way to upcycle a book that is old that you've already read or not reading or you just found it at a thrift store. For me, like I said, I picked mine up for $1.25 from the Dollar Tree. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna put a line of glue. I like to let it sit for a second so that it starts to dry a little bit, not where it's just too piping hot because you will burn your finger through the paper. And then you're gonna start to add on those ruffles. And you're just basically gonna keep repeating this process. Hot glue, put down ruffle paper, and I like everything to always be secure. So I'm gonna come back in 
while stuff is drying a little bit and I'm going to just simply staple this down. This is going to solve the solution. I know a lot of you say, hey, I live in a place where there's really, really hot heat and the hot glue doesn't stay. So if you add on that staple, it'll really make sure it stays. Once you've gone all the way around the wreath, which by the way, I'm gonna be honest, this took me some time. It took me about four hours and I ended up enlisting the help of my son just so I didn't hurt my fingers after a while from crinkling the paper up so much. I went all the way around and I made sure on the back side that I was having a nice finished look. I think this is where it makes it look more high end quality where you would see something like this in a boutique. Go ahead and make sure the very ending points leaves it where there's kind of a valley so that way you can add on ribbon when you want to. Now I took a piece of ribbon and I first wrapped it around. I didn't glue it down and then I glued my bow on top. This is the back side of that ribbon not glued down. So that way I can tie it on and I can change out the ribbon all the time because with a project like this, if I'm gonna go through the effort to make it because it's so hands-on, I wanna be able to make sure I can switch out the bow. So just make sure whatever bow that you're layering lots of different ribbons on, make sure you can switch it out. Now at this point, I'm gonna go ahead at the top and add on something to be able to hang it up. This is just such a beautiful farmhouse look to hang on a door inside your home or even your front door and it'll just get even more weathered over time. For this DIY, we're gonna be using some of this fabric, three pieces of wood cut down to size. I will put the measurements down below. Some of these branch wood slices, and you could honestly just go out into your yard and find a thick branch after a storm, and then some berry garland. Start by sanding your wood down to make sure there's no splinters anymore, and then go ahead and give it two coats of white paint. Then I went into the top with my drill bit, and I drilled out a hole and I'm going to do the same thing to my branches because we want to make sure they're not going to just pop off. I like things being locked in and put together properly so over time things don't just pop off because we've used hot glue. Now I'm going to be using hot glue but you could also use wood glue. But you're going to see how I drilled my holes in both of the ends. Now I'm taking a shish kebab stick. I'm going to cut that down and I'm going to pop that right in there to make sure it's the right length put on my topper branch for my cute little pumpkin I'm making here. And this is really going to allow it to hold so strongly together. And again, you could use wood glue with this, but I'm just using hot glue because it works really great as well. And then I push that right on top, and at this point you can go ahead and distress it. I'm going to take some of this gingham fabric, and you can use whatever color you want, but I'm going for a very neutral look for these pumpkins. And then I'm just going to rip off some fabric, cut it down to size, and tie that on as a knot. Hey, and if you haven't already, please do give this video a thumbs up. It really does mean a lot to me. It helps out my channel, and it helps this video be seen out there on the YouTube algorithm, and it helps other viewers find it. Then the last thing we need to do is just add this bead garland, and it's ready to be displayed in your home. For this DIY, we're gonna start with this beautiful stencil that I picked up from Studio R12. I love their stencils. And a piece of scrap wood that I found when I was cleaning my garage and I thought, oh, that would be so pretty as a fall sign. <laughs> I find little things like that around my house all the time. So we're gonna start with painting the sign. I went around the edges with some, you know, not super saturated paint, just kind of roughly going over it because I wanna see that wood come through. Paint is such a fun mixed medium to work with. Sometimes you can have it heavily saturated where the color's really strong, and then there's other times where you do one, maybe two coats, where that wood can come through, and you can see that grain in there, which just looks so pretty for farmhouse decor. So I'm gonna make sure it's nice and dry, flip it over and finish the back side by just putting a little bit of paint on it so it looks nice and cohesive. I'm gonna take some washi tape and you see here that I rub my hand across to make sure it's nice and smooth 
and add on the other piece of washi tape to lock it down into place so that now I can add on my paint. Now I'm going to be doing something called steepling. I'm using a special brush. I will link the stencil and my brush down below in the description box. But remember, if you don't want to purchase things from online, they do have stencils at the Dollar Tree and they're so fun to work with, especially if you don't have a cutting tool and you want to give stencils a try or some type of a font like this a try. So after removing the stencil off, and slowly adding on little layers of paint. I did two layers of paint. I did the first, I let it dry, I did the second, and then I removed it. And now I'm coming in with my heat gun to really make sure the paint is locked in and dried before I come in and I start distressing it with some sandpaper and my ink pad. Friends, this project was so easy. It was so easy. If you're a new crafter, start with stencils. They're so fun to work with and remember, just do very thin brushed on dry brushed layers of your stencil paint because that will keep it from bleeding and smudging and having any problems. So now you can see I'm just coming in. I sand it around the edges some. I've got this ink pad that I picked up from Amazon, but you can get it at any craft store. But this is the one that I like. I'm just simply gently rubbing the edges and rubbing the sides of my sign. I don't want to push my finger down into the center of that pad because then it will make too much ink to come down. I'm just lightly, lightly padding, lightly brushing on layers of this brown paint and it is giving the most beautiful tint and distressing to the sign. And you can see when I push down harder over there in that corner where my pinky is, the color is more saturated and I want it like that on my edges. So play with it, have fun with it. These signs are so fun to make. This project is so much fun. I found these brand new pumpkin steaks at the Dollar Tree and they had them in three colors and I immediately knew I wanted to make them into a beautiful, beautiful decor piece. So grab three of those colors, a foam square, one of these black metal baskets, some fabric, which I'm using drop cloth, and some ribbon. We're gonna start by cutting down a piece of that drop cloth to fit down inside there. You want it to look all farmhouse and kind of rugged. So don't worry about the sizing being so perfect. And then we're gonna take that foam piece and I'm going to just poke some holes using the white pumpkin down into there because it's gonna be a little too difficult trying to glue it in there to make things stay without making a mess on the bottom. I wanna have a clean finished look. So I'm gonna take two zip ties and we're going to sneak that zip tie down into one of the holes and just a second earlier, I was showing myself snipping little holes at the bottom of that fabric. That's so we can slip the zip tie end through that hole, come through the basket, and we're going to come back up around the other side through the fabric, through the foam piece, and then zip tie it on the inside of the basket. This is going to make it look so clean, so polished, without hot glue being everywhere at the bottom of this and making it look too messy. I like this approach so much more. It does take a little bit of finagling to get that in there, but it's definitely worth the results if you do it this way. So I just keep moving around the fabric so I make sure that the sides are all pulled up. Once I've got that all in place, I go ahead and zip tie it down into the basket. And because of the little metal caging, the zip tie sits nicely down there without causing any issues of the basket not being able to sit flat on the ground. So once I've got that zip tie down, I'm now going to come in with the hot glue and I'm going to go along the inner rim of that basket and I'm just going to tap the fabric up against it so it really cleans up that fabric and now it has that fall farmhouse look. I'm going to conceal that foam with some Spanish moss and now we're going to move on to our metal staked pumpkins. This part is so much fun and I will say if you have any arthritis you're going to need to have someone cut this part for you because it is a little tricky to cut these metal pieces. They are a little bit thicker than the normal one which is okay but like I said if you have any arthritis issues just get someone that's willing to help you cut this part. You can see here that I've lined up my pumpkins and I'm cutting the stakes down on these 
so that they're all the same length because we're going to take these three pumpkins and zip tie them together. I'm coming around where the stem is and I wanted my pumpkins to be kind of tilting to the side a little bit to give them some whimsical fall character to them. And I'm going to just zip tie that part of that leaf to the white stake on the pumpkin. And now I'm going to zip tie part of the vine off of the orange pumpkin onto the yellow and white stakes. And you can see here that I'm just shifting them around and then at the very end I'm going to come down to the bottom and zip tie all three of those together. This is going to really lock them into place. They're nice and sturdy at this point and we're going to go ahead and stake that into our foam piece. Now this part's really important because you want to have a nice sturdy finished piece. Make sure you push that all the way down in there and then use lots of hot glue and conceal it with that Spanish moss that's in the basket. I made sure to go up around the rods on the pumpkins and I'm just now going to straighten it out to make sure it's sitting the way I like it to before it all dries. At this point it's so stinking cute and it has such a Kirkland's high-end look to it. We also are going to conceal those zip ties with some brown paint. It's going to make them completely disappear once you add that brown paint to them. And we're going to be able to decorate these pumpkins however you want. You can put some flowers in it. You can leave it as just the Spanish moss. It's up to you. I've decided to come in with some grass. Now I will tell you friends, I added on these two bows and afterwards you're going to see that the green bow is missing because I just felt like it was overwhelming it too much. While I loved the green bow and I thought it was so pretty, I decided to simplify it and only keeping that beautiful fall check ribbon on there versus having the big green bow. Now I'm coming in with a whole bunch of florals, a couple of buttons to really make the finish look all come together and when it's done, it has the most high-end look and it only costs us a couple of dollars from the Dollar Tree. This is my favorite sign, the Dollar Tree came out this fall season, and I wanted to turn it into something really special since it's such a large sign. I thought it would be so fun to turn it into an advent calendar with pockets. Now friends, I wanna share my updated opinion on these miter shears. I will tell you, if you're working with something that has a rounded or beveled edge, it's easier to cut with them versus something that's flat like a painter stick. Good luck, they do not cut through that. I just don't really particularly like them for that. But for dowels, it does do a good job. So I just wanted to give that update on that. So I cut this dowel down to size and I put some glue on some fabric. And I'm gonna show the measurements for this in just a moment. But I'm getting a very large piece of felt and a piece of drop cloth. And I wanted to have these two different tones layered. And you can see here that I'm gluing them all together. You could sew this. I definitely recommend it if you like to sew, but I know a lot of you on here are not seamstress and you don't sew. So if you do, make sure you get a brayer roller and this is going to allow you to be able to smooth out that hot glue. Now I wanted some scallops on the side of my advent calendar, so I'm just using a large jumbo sized tongue depressor stick that I get from like Walmart. I traced some scallops and then cut them out with some small fussy cutting scissors. This is honestly the best to be able to get into these tight spaces using a small pair of scissors. And I just like the, how the scallop look. You don't have to do the scallop, but I personally loved it. Now I'm gonna glue on this sign and you can see that I am using quite a bit of glue. And I wanna make sure that I'm using quite a bit of the fabric at the top to really glue on there so that the weight of the things in the pockets are not going to separate the fabric from the sign over time. And now I'm going to just use that brayer again. I'm going to roll all over it. I'll make sure I link that down below. Now here's the measurement for the fabric for the yellow. I used a felt, a thick felt, and then the tan is actually a drop cloth. 
Now I'm figuring out the sizing I need for my pockets to fit across the width and the length of this advent calendar. I went ahead and just put down my measurements again. Now I'm moving on to cutting my pockets. And you can see here for my cotton fabric that has this pattern on it, a lot of people use this for quilting, I'm gonna go ahead and fold it over and double it up. So if I'm doubling up the fabric, I'm gonna use a nine by four and a half inch. If not, if it's just a solo piece of fabric, I'm using the four and a half by four and a half. I thought I would also share my rotating cutting mat. It's a self healing cutting mat and you can use it for sewing or crafting. I love this thing, it is my new favorite. So I'm gonna link that down below as well as the brayer tool. Now that my pockets are all cut out and I've decided what I want each pattern to be in what place, I'm gonna go ahead and start working on my pockets. Now for the really thin fabric, like this really thin green fabric, I'm taking some of that drop cloth and just lining the inside of it with some of the drop cloth, just a four and a half by four and a half square. And then now I'm gonna go ahead and glue that down. I put something right in the place of where the insert of the pocket would be, just so that I can create a little bit of an opening and it's not gonna have it where it's a perfect square laying on the actual drop cloth. So once I've got all of those glued down, cause you wanna be able to put your hand inside there without struggling, I then moved on to the tags. The tags are just little garden stakes that you can get in the floral section at the Dollar Tree. And I went ahead and popped off those sticks from the back and I'm just hand painting on all of the numbers one through 16. I went and I looked at the calendar and I wanted each pocket to represent a Saturday throughout all of the fall season. So every Saturday we can do something fun like go pick out pumpkins or we can you know, work on picking out our costumes and each little pocket will have some type of a treat that will be also inside of it for my kids. I love advent calendars. I cannot say enough about them because I just feel like it gets everyone so excited for the season no matter what it is, for Christmas, for fall, for spring, I'm a big fan of them. So now I'm coming in with a bunch of my buttons. I collect buttons, I love buttons, I have always loved buttons. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and just glue a whole bunch of those all over, and the hot glue does a great trick. I'm also at the top where the hole originally was for the twine of this sign. I'm gonna add on some of these half wood beads because I just thought it made it look more farmhouse and it really cleaned up the top. And to finish off the project, I flipped it over, I put down some twine, and then to reinforce the twine, I'm taking a jumbo popsicle stick, and I'm just going to put some glue, I cut it down to size, and put that right on top to help reinforce it and make it stronger. Start by grabbing this fall and love sign from the Dollar Tree and we're gonna make it where it can stand up on its own. Go ahead and cut off the twine from the back of it and grab some tumbling blocks. We're going to need three rows of seven, which means you need 21 of these tumbling blocks. Once you've got them all laid out and you've figured out their measurement, which again is seven across, you're gonna go ahead and start gluing them together in rows of seven. Once you've got those nice and glued all the way across, because you can see I glued them on the ends, go ahead and stand up your side, lay one of those long rows down on the table, and try to get it as straight as you possibly can so that this sign will stand up nice and straight. Then go ahead and glue that on the front as well, and then we're gonna do the third row on the back. This is going to allow it to stand up nice and strong, and it is going to look so high quality. These signs that look like this, they sell them at Hobby Lobby where they're like 15, 16, sometimes $20 for this size. And we're basically making it for $1.25 for the sign and then for a box of tumbling blocks, another $1.25. 
Friends, this is such a fun way to elevate the look of these wall sign decor pieces at the Dollar Tree, and we're basically making it for $2.50. Now I'm gonna add on some buttons, and you can see that I also painted the bottom stand to match the fall letters. And after that, you've got the most beautiful, high quality looking sign for just $2.50 and a couple of buttons. What would our world be without craft rooms and crafting? <laughs> I love crafting so much and I really do hope that this video inspired you with these 10 projects to try in your own spaces. I'm so grateful for this gift that God has put in my hands and this passion to use crafting to fulfill my heart. I wanna thank you all for being here this day. Please do give this video a thumbs up and until the next episode, bye friends.